for the next hour that I have you, you're going to really get to know each other better. So don't expect to be sitting passively because that ain't happening. You know, I was reflecting on yesterday, the incredible learning, the many panels, and I often close out keynotes and presentations that I do around the globe with this poem. But I decided we should start this morning with this poem because there's actually a fair amount of pain in this room. There's actually, if you listen carefully to the conversations, there's a lot of pain as we feel what it feels like to be dismissed or shunned or not invited to the party or to the table in our corporate work lives. And there's been a lot of discussions about how to deal with other people, men and women. And I heard this poem, my friend Lindsay shared it with me, Lindsay Mast. And I heard this poem and, I, and it has had such a profound impact on me. And as I think and approach my life as a leader, and an entrepreneur, a mother, a daughter, a sister, a friend. And this poem was found, and you might have heard it before, on a wall in Calcutta, India. Mother Teresa's children's home. So I want you just to really listen to these words, because we in this room, including myself, we get very caught up in other people and what they think about us, what they're doing. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, they, if you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may try to cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone can destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you have anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it's between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. Thank you. There's copies of that poem um, on the table. And you can look it up if there's not enough. You could, there's a bunch of tables that have extras. And we have some at our booth out front. So let's get started. Can anyone tell me what this is? Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So. What is Maslow's hierarchy of needs? What is it? Can anyone tell me? Yes. 
how we prioritize our needs of our lives. So it'd be very, you know, at the beginning, we obviously need to have food and water and sleep. And as we go up the hierarchy, we need to have shelter, okay? Need to, it's very important that we feel connected to our family, community. And as we go higher up the hierarchy, being at conferences like this become really important, being here at Witty, because we feel that we want to build the skills that will lead to honor, recognition. We are working on ourselves constantly. We want to learn. We want to get better. We want to self-actualize where we feel we're living to our highest potential. And I think it was Simon Sinek, it might have been Adam Grant, who said, what is the busiest section of a bookstore? Self-help. But we'll argue here, there's something higher than this higher, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There's something higher than this. And we call it transcendence. It's when we realize that we can help another human being self-actualize. We're transcending ourselves into another space where we want to see others self-actualize. Back to the movie Avatar and the Na'avi phrase, which you said it, you have the words for it, I see you. Do we see each other? And if I see you and what you really need and what you're really about, and there's some way I can help you self-actualize. Because we're all somewhere working on this hierarchy. And there really isn't, as I think uh, Simon Sinek said, there's, there, you don't go to a bookstore and see a big help other people section, do you? Something big happened, and it came, I, thought it, I thought it was going to be news for months, years. Something big happened in the news last week from the World Health Organization. What did they say? Anyone hear that news? The World Health Organization made an announcement. To me, it was groundbreaking or earth-shattering. I'm not sure which word to use. The World Health Organization diagnosed burnout as an official disease. Diagnosed corporate burnout as an official disease. There was an article in Harvard Business Review by Emma Sapala, and the article said, based on her research, 50% of Americans are burned out. 50%. They don't want to, they, they, they're fatigued before they even start work. Okay? But the leading cause of burnout, do you know what she found was the leading cause? And this goes back to a lot of the things that Senator Hannah Beth, Jack, Hannah Beth Jackson said. Leading cause of burnout, ready for this? Lack of human connection. It's burning us out. It's making us sick. I want to define for you, because we're going to, in a few minutes, take the spotlight off the stage and pull it back on all of us to have an opportunity for some really good human connections through mentoring. And so first I want to define, mentor it, a mentoring is a collaborative, mutually beneficial partnership between a mentor, and that mentor tends to possess greater skills, knowledge, and experience, and a person, a mentee, who's looking to increase his or her skills, knowledge, and experience. A mutual 
bene a mutually beneficial partnership. Now, in some cases, does this have anything to do with age? No. <laughs> Kirsten, where are you? Kirsten, I'm like, Kirsten, can you mentor me on this or this technology or how things are done? And definitely can you mentor me on being a parent because you can relate to my 16-year-old better than I can. Um, so there's a lot of um, things that we all want to learn from each other. And so there's many ways that we mentor. There's just sort of the traditional mentoring. We have reverse mentoring where the person who tends to have less experience mentors the person, I'm sorry, might have more experience in certain skills or technologies or collaborations. Um, a lot of companies are, to better retain their millennials, are really focused on reverse mentoring. Diverse mentoring, where we don't mentor people who look and act just like us, okay? We each are a book. We each have chapters and chapters of experiences and, and reference points and we share our books with each other. It's a pretty amazing thing. There is peer-to-peer -peer mentoring where we take someone who's a peer and we kind of split the time together to mentor each other. Um, and then there's sponsorship we're gonna talk about. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to just Grab, there's a card, and it says, are you ready? We're going to go pretty quickly. Is there a timer up here, guys? Um, we're going to go pretty quickly because I want to get us into the flash mentoring. But I want you to just, on the far left side, think about who mentored you in life? Who did you go to for professional advice as a woman in technology or a woman in STEM? Who has mentored you? And if it's no one, that's okay. As I travel the globe building mentoring initiatives and cultures for major companies, I'm finding that less than 30% of people will say that they have a mentor someone they feel they can go to for professional advice. But even if you need to, think back about that high school coach, a college professor or advisor, a family friend. Who mentored you? And then underneath that, I want you to write what impact did they have on your life and your career trajectory. So just take a minute. If you're done with that, on the far right of the card, think about what do people come to you for? When people come to you for professional advice, what are one, two, three things that they tend to come to you for? I love LinkedIn. I think it's amazing. A lot of people come to me to discuss how to turn content marketing into revenues and a strategy between LinkedIn and MailChimp. So I love talking about technology. Um, I also love talking about relationships. I'm a girl, what can I say? <laughs> I did have my 20th wedding anniversary last week. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, but I like to talk, um, and especially with younger women getting married and trying to figure out how to balance it all. So what is something, things that people tend to come to you for advice on? 
and what are things that you might want professional support on. You can put that on the right side of your card. We call these our competency cards and we often use them with companies for mentor matching purposes. But it's good to reflect on what you most need and what you most have to offer before engaging in any mentoring relationship. So I'd love to hear from four or five of you, if you can just shout out, don't look at this. When you think of the person you wrote down on your page who's been a mentor to you, what makes them a good mentor, a quality that they had that was beneficial to you? Can I have a couple shout outs? I'll just sort of point to tables and I'll go around the room, okay? If you have one, just shout it out. Yeah. Okay, maintaining professionalism in the face of gossip. They read the poem, right? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, yeah, back there. Honest. Back there. Honesty. Confident. Growth mindset. Hi. <laughs> Growth mindset. I love that. I'm just saying hi to you because we had a nice talk yesterday. <laughs> Believed in me and my abilities, the encourager. Yes. They saw something in you that you actually are really a people person and saw something in you that would help you in management. Yes. Hi, friend. <laughs> they opened doors. Just a cute story about Margaret, who's a head of technology for the state, uh, for Miami-Dade County. We were having lunch, because we both live in Florida, and I was like, I'm going to Women in Technology International, and da 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 you should be there. And she called me, she goes, I booked my tickets. <laughs> so I'm really glad you're here, <laughs> my friend. Okay, great, these are good. So good listening, ask good questions, balanced in perspective, honest, trustworthy, does not share with other people. Um, they, they give you candid feedback, are non-judgmental, available, okay? They're some kind of role model to you. And um, they, some, for some people, and I think we saw this in the research yesterday, men are asking their mentors for more I'll call it sponsorship type things. But do they have a leadership and a network? Okay, do, um, and, do they, and, sh and that they often will share stories from their experience rather than using the words, you should. Okay, and we'll get more into that. The other thing is, good mentors don't necessarily mean, it doesn't necessarily mean we're sitting across the table and just talking, there's a great quote, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. So sometimes a mentor will bring their mentee to a conference like this, will get them to tables that maybe they couldn't have otherwise gotten to, will have them join them in some type of experience or involve them on a project. So I had a really good talk with um, Jim Clifton, the CEO of Gallup. And he shared with me that when he went and got a job, you know, when he was younger, he would go and get a job. And once he had the job, he would get a paycheck. And upon getting the paycheck, he would get, he got married, built a house, had four kids, got the red Chevy, and would travel, not by plane, but usually about 100 miles from where he lived to visit the grandparents. Put the kids, the dog, everyone in the car. That's four, it's kind of crowded. And um, that's, the job was a means to an end. The job was the paycheck. And from the paycheck, you could have all these other things in life, okay? And um, also, it gave him a community because at, in, at his age, you know, you'd have the job for 25 years. So he, you know, often people would meet their spouses at work, they'd have their barbecues with their friends, and it was part of a community. 
that they were in for a really long time. Today, um, we go in and we interview for jobs, and our young people are wanting to know, look, if I'm going to be here for 24 to 36 months, <laughs> are you going to be investing in my learning and development? How will I have purpose? How will I know I'm doing well? How do I know the projects you're giving me, manager, are useful or important to the company? So leadership and purpose, training and development, often rank very high. They also want their managers, in a Deloitte study, 79% want their managers to be mentors. They want more feedback and view it as crucial to their professional success. Some interesting things are happening, though, in the workforce. The baby boomers retiring, 10,000 turn 65 each day, 43% plan to retire after the age of 70, but a, a percentage, and I think this number's a little low, 10% don't feel they have the nest egg to retire. And life got more expensive, and they're helping out their kids and all the college debt. The baby boomers are the parents of the millennials. So a lot of them feel they don't have the nest egg to retire. They feel they have a lot of experience, a lot of things to offer. But you have these five generations in the workforce, and the escalator, according to Thomas Friedman, is crowded, and people are not getting off it so quickly. 23%, regardless of age, of employees voluntarily leave their jobs due to lack of development and training. And more and more young people are wondering, if I come work for your company, will you be training and mentoring me? And that might be more of a priority than the brand of the company. And a lot of them have gigs on the side. They're coming to work, but they also have an entrepreneurial venture that could be kind of fun and creative that they're doing. There was a study by Wharton and Gartner, and the study was on Sun Microsystems in the engineering department before Sun Microsystems was sold to Oracle. People could choose whether or not they wanted to be in a formal mentoring program. And people who elected to be mentors in a formal program, I think it was about nine or 10 months long, five years later, those people had been promoted six times more. The mentees, the people who were not ashamed to ask for help and wanted to be part of the program, the mentees, five years later, were promoted five times more than the comparison group that didn't ask for help. Does anyone know what it costs to replace an employee, especially someone with strong sales or technical skills? How much? What? 3x. OK, in Society of Human Resource Management, I've heard 1 to 3x salary. Retention rates of those mentors and mentees at Sun Microsystems, the retention rates were 20% higher. So if you save 20 jobs times 100,000 each plus benefits, it's a, it's a huge, millions of dollars in, sa in savings of retention, as long as obviously that they're happy and productive employees and the employer's happy with them. So I just wanted to lay for you a little bit of foundation on the business case for mentoring. Um, taking a little bit of a look of what's happening that's very real, which is the burnout and um, UCLA study on America's loneliness epidemic that came out about a year ago, said 54% of Americans do not feel they have someone they can talk with. 54%. Cigna commissioned the study. The hardest, the loneliest, 18 to 24 year olds. It's not acceptable. So how do we close our laptops, put down our cell phones, make eye contact, and create valuable 
highly impactful mentoring relationships where they're mutually beneficial alliances. Let's try it on for size right here, right now. So I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine that there are a lineup of gorgeous VWs. Who's here from VW? Okay, gorgeous VWs. And each of us get to pick our own color and we've got the car keys because we're about to go on a mentor road trip. Sponsored by VW. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to do, I want you in each stage of the game, of this journey, to pick someone you don't know. Okay, I pick someone you don't know and I'm going to share with you what you're gonna be doing with that person and you're gonna have like four, four and a half minutes to do some speed mentoring. I'm going to give you the conversation topic. If you are having any difficulty matching with someone, come to the front and I love to match make. I'll hook you up. So I want you to do that. Now listen, very important. I'm gonna tell you when you have 30 seconds left, Kirsten will be our timekeeper. And Kirsten, and then what, this is really important. When you see my hands go up for time, I want your hands to go up too. And this is a little speaker secret. We will shut down the room in less than 20 seconds. So you can go meet your next partner. Got it? Any questions? Okay. All right. So for the first session, you're going to get up, okay? No more passive listening, guys. We're in, we're in the game. I want you to get up. I want you to grab someone. The person who traveled the farthest between the two of you is the mentor. Listen up. I just need to give you your assignment. You're going to get in your car. Listen up. You're going to get in your car and mentors. Womp, womp, womp. Okay, <laughs> mentors, listen up. You're going to tell them, I want you to tell them about your professional journey so far and the big decisions, the big stops on the way, the big decisions you took. Just share a little bit. Mentees, this person is sharing this for your benefit. You are the mentee. They want to help you with your career trajectory. Feel free to ask questions. Kirsten, Kirsten, we have four minutes, and then we're going to give them a 30-second, um, and then you'll be meeting your next partner. So ready? One, two, three, go. If you have trouble matching, come to the front. All right, 18 seconds, not bad. I was a little worried about this one. <laughs> they were having, you know what I loved walking around? is how sincere and into the conversations you were. I saw great eye contact and very deep conversations having 
being had on a tough conversation, the challenges we face in the workplace. So what I want to do now is there should be another pair near you. There should be another pair near you. Actually, I take that back. <laughs> This is what I want you to do. I want you to find someone in this room who does not, I repeat, does not remind you of yourself. <laughs> Just for some reason, you figure it out, does not remind you of yourself. Now, the person, okay, if one of you in the last segment was a mentee and one was a mentor, switch places. If you were both the same, the person with the higher heels on <laughs> is the mentor. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to go back in time and remember yourself early in your career. Those first few months, as a woman in technology, a woman in STEM, I want you to remember those first few months on the job. What was the best advice a mentor gave you about not just surviving, but thriving as a woman in the workplace? So find someone who does not remind you of yourself. If you were a mentor last time, you're going to switch places. And the, the tiebreaker is the person with the, then the higher heels becomes the mentor if both of you were the same. Go. You've got five minutes. <laughs> Listen up. You have a card. And that card is that you either want to continue a conversation or you would like to have a mentoring conversation with someone that you met here at this conference. So we're asking you to give that card to someone by the end of the day and just schedule a coffee, a Zoom, a Skype chat, and to just continue a conversation, a mentoring conversation. It can be someone you met here in the flash mentoring where just five minutes was not enough. Or it can be someone that you spoke with and you didn't have enough time, but you really want to learn something from them. It's a beautiful quote by Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you've said, people will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. That you care about them, their path, their career trajectory. So. Before I close out our mentor road trip flash mentoring, and by the way, um, when I started to mentor, did anyone notice anything kind of cool or different about our name? Look at the look at the um, look on your on your cards on your table. What do you see in the word to mentor? Everyone writes to men like to men capital M, and I'm like, we wanted to get the word women into mentoring, and as Rob Bass and DJ Eze -E says, it takes two to make things go right. It takes two to make it out of sight. So, hey, <laughs> so invite someone for a mentoring coffee, and again, now mentees, if you are aspiring to go into a professional mentoring relationship and the witty data shared, showed extraordinary gains for people that were mentored, which also backs up the, in terms of promotions. Remember the people who were making $250,000 and above? I think 83% of those people were mentored. So, but it's important to know and distinguish between what a mentor and a sponsor is. A mentor is someone who speaks with you and shares from his or her learning and experience, knowledge. Some mentors might take on some coaching skills as well. 
and incorporate some accountability and Socratic methods to their style of mentoring. Mentors tend to be encouragers and or challengers. Hopefully both, and a lot of that's going to be up to you and how open the relationship is and the trust to give feedback. Usually a mentor is not in your chain of command. Okay? A sponsor, so a mentor speaks with you and a sponsor speaks about you behind closed doors, champions you to others for promotions and opportunities. We're going to need to see a lot more leaders, mentor and sponsor diversely because all the research shows people tend to mentor and sponsor in their own likeness. That's why I asked you, it's very easy to engineer this, but to find someone who just does not remind you of yourself. Because if we want more diversity, we're going to need to mentor and sponsor more diversely. To end, I was at a meeting and I heard someone say hope. Hearing from other people's experiences is how they interpreted the word hope. Hearing from other people's experience, and you can tell by the name to mentor, I like to play with letters. And I sort of thought, hmm, I starting with the P, people opting to help each other. Helping another person self-actualize, seeing each other. So thank you for participating and seeing each other today. Thank you for joining.